Sunday, the 21st of April, 1918. An all-red Fokker triplane takes off from a French airfield. Below it, the last great German offensive on the Western Front, launched a month before, threatens to split the British and French armies and open the way to Paris. Four years of trench warfare were nearing their end. Overhead, a furious air battle was raging. On the ground and in the air, the fate of Germany hung in the balance. In a maelstrom of dogfights above the trenches, men and machines were stretched to the limit of their endurance. That morning, a mist hung over the sodden, crater-strewn German airfield at Capi in the Somme Valley a desolate location which housed the most famous air formation of the war. The flying circus commanded by the legendary ace of aces, Baron Manfred von Richthofen, whose scarlet-painted fighter had earned him the nickname of the Red Baron. At last, a watery sun dispersed the mist. Von Richthofen's triplane was readied for combat. The Red Baron squeezed into his flying gear as his mechanics fussed over last-minute adjustments to his aircraft. The mission for which von Richthofen was preparing was routine, no different from hundreds he had flown. He was to lead a patrol to attack British reconnaissance aircraft flying over the Somme. A quick briefing with his pilots, a glance at the clearing sky, and then von Richthofen clambered into the cockpit behind his twin Spandau machine guns. Then he took off at the head of the first of two flights of fighters. When von Richthofen's patrol returned, they brought grim news. Their leader was missing. He had apparently been shot down over the British lines. The Red Baron had seemed invincible. Had he become another statistic among millions? His flight had tangled with a squadron of Sopwith camels of the Royal Air Force. Richthofen had last been seen with one of them on his tail, piloted by Captain A.R. Brown. The effect on German morale was shattering. The Red Baron had been flying over a sector held by Australian troops, and they formed a guard of honor at his funeral. But even as von Richthofen was consigned to the grave, a bitter argument was raging over who had shot him down. Did the Red Baron fall to the guns of Brown's camel, or was his fabulous career brought to an end by a mud-bound machine gunner in the Australian trenches below him? The mystery added another layer to the myths surrounding the career of the greatest fighter ace of the First World War. Manfred von Richthofen was born in 1892, the son of a Prussian aristocrat whose estates lay in Silesia. With such a background, a career as a soldier beckoned. After attending military school at Wahlstadt, he went to the famous Royal Prussian Military Academy in Lichterfeld. Manfred was a superb shot and horseman. In 1912, with the rank of lieutenant, he joined a crack regiment of Uhlans. In August 1914, the rhythms of peacetime soldiering were interrupted by war. Manfred led his troop of Uhlans into Russian Poland, but within two weeks his unit was transferred to the Western Front. In the war which took a grip on France, there was no role for cavalry. Trenches, barbed wire and machine guns made the man on the horse a helpless bystander. The Germans and the Allies kept their cavalry well to the rear hoping for the breakthrough which never came.
von Richthofen was relegated to the unromantic role of supply officer. Endless paperwork and the drudgery of days spent in reeking dugouts made cavalry charges a distant memory. From the trenches, von Richthofen had plenty of time to observe the new form of warfare being born overhead. The young cavalry officers saw a way to escape the mud and boredom. He trained as an observer and soon found himself back on the Eastern Front, where he flew regular reconnaissance missions, a role previously reserved for the cavalry. Machines held sway now, and von Richthofen had successfully made the transition from horse to aeroplane. In the process, he discovered a fierce exhilaration in flying. He wrote to his mother, nearly every day I fly over the enemy and report. I reported the retreat of the Russians three days ago. It gives me great fun. In August 1915, von Richthofen was transferred to the Western Front to join a top secret formation codenamed the Carrier Pigeon Unit which was pioneering long-range bombing operations. By now, he had developed a burning ambition to become a pilot, but had to wait until the Christmas of 1915 before he completed training and received his wings. Back in France and spoiling for a fight, von Richthofen immediately fitted a machine gun to the upper wing of his two-seater reconnaissance aircraft. Air combat had made great strides since the early days of the war, when pilots went aloft armed with carbines and pistols. The breakthrough had come in February 1915, when the French introduced a fixed machine gun which fired forward through the propeller. Steel plates deflected the few bullets which the designers of the system, Roland Garros and Raymond Saulnier, calculated would strike the blades. But Garros came down behind enemy lines, and his captured aircraft enabled the aero engineer Anthony Fokker to design an interrupter gear which allowed the gun to fire only when no propeller was in the way. The interrupter was fitted to a Fokker monoplane, the Eindecker, which became the first true fighter aircraft. In what became known as the Fokker Scourge, the Eindecker's synchronized machine gun took a heavy toll of virtually defenseless Allied reconnaissance aircraft. In a ten-month reign of terror which began in August 1915, the Eindeckers nearly shot the British and French air forces out of the sky. In January 1916, the headquarters of the British Royal Flying Corps ordered that every reconnaissance aircraft was always to be escorted by at least three combat aircraft flying in close formation. The Eindecker also produced a new breed of fighter aces. The charismatic Oswald Bölke codified the essentials of air combat in a pithy set of rules. His friend, Max Immelmann, reportedly devised a classic maneuver which bears his name, the Immelmann turn, a loop and half roll which put his aircraft above and then behind a pursuing enemy machine, usually with fatal results. Von Richthofen had not yet graduated to the ranks of the fighter aces. He continued to fly reconnaissance and bombing missions, first from Metz and then back on the Eastern Front, where in June 1916, the Russians launched a massive offensive. Von Richthofen took particular note of the effect of bombing and strafing on columns of enemy cavalry. Cossack columns were scattered in all directions by machine gun fire. It was at this point that von Richthofen was recruited by Oswald Bölke. The father of fighter tactics was touring the Eastern Front in search of pilots for his new flying formations, the Jagdstaffel, literally hunting flights, which he was forming in France. The aristocratic young bomber pilot seemed promising material for these units, which were dubbed Jastas. Early in September 1916, von Richthofen joined Jasta II. His ambition was now realized. He was a fighter pilot pure and simple. By now, the British and French had regained the initiative with fighters like the Newport Baby. The Eindecker was obsolete, but a sleek, sharp-nosed replacement had arrived at the front, the Albatross biplane. 
It was in an albatross that von Richthofen scored his first official victory on 17th of September 1916, bringing down an FE2 pusher biplane of the Royal Flying Corps. The FE2 was an agile aircraft, but its rear-mounted engine made it particularly vulnerable to attack from behind. The mortally wounded pilot managed to bring his aircraft down. Von Richthofen landed alongside to confirm his kill. That night von Richthofen ordered a silver cup from a Berlin silversmith as a trophy. It would be the first of many. As one career began, another ended. On the 28th of October, Oswald Bölker died in a mid-air collision. Three days later, von Richthofen carried Bölker's medals on a black cushion at his memorial service in Combray. Von Richthofen's score was now mounting, but on the 23rd of November 1916, he nearly met his match in an epic duel with the English Bölker, Major Lanu Hawker, the commander of the Royal Flying Corps' 24 Squadron. But it was Hawker who died only yards short of the safety of the British line. 